uh, I want to give a little bit of a background here, if I can, about where I've, I've come from. Uh, the United States, to me, already is too bad of a place to live in. We are the proverbial frog that was put in cold water, and now it's boiling, and we all think we're in a hot tub, and, we're, uh, and everything is just, just peachy keen and copacetic. There's massive deception in this country about really how bad it already is. Um, there's some things that, that are that's coming down the pike. Um, I've put the pieces of puzzle together. I've looked and listened to the people that don't have an agenda, but that really are uh, able to, to, to give what's really going on in the world. There's a cabal of people, but there are people out there that really can pull the strings. Uh, so I think there's a lot of people that want to, power-hungry people that want to, but there is a group that, that, that is able to pull it off. And my greatest concern right now is these people, because of their belief in eugenics, want to reduce the world's population by 90%. They say it. They quote it. They're not shy about it. By all the documentation that, that they're implementing it and how they're doing it. Um, so there's a lot of scenarios that can come down the pike. I mean, just, just a bunch of, um, I mean, martial law. If, if Obama wants to sign martial law into uh, effect tomorrow, it can be done. It's just a, a signature. But there's a lot of things that could potentially happen. Um, I mean, another uh, Chernobyl, Fukushima type event, uh, world war. I mean, look at what's going on in the Middle East right now with Israel. Things could get out of hand. We know that uh, there's going to be tit for tat. Uh, there's countries that are uh, raising their ugly head against each other, and they're fighting, and uh, Russia's threatening, China's threatening. Russia said, don't go into Syria, uh, to the United States. And so the world powers are kind of at a very tense e edge right now. Um, I think everybody knows that the economy of the United States is in deep, deep doo-doo. Anybody that looks at any graph uh, knows that it wasn't too long ago we were the greatest credit nation on earth. We had more money than everybody. Now we're the greatest debtor nation on earth. We have more debt than 90% of the countries in the world combined. Um, the economy could collapse. We could you know, get into hyperinflation. Um, there could be a pandemic. We came close last year to potentially having one where everybody has to be forced to be vaccinated. There's going to be people that don't want to be vaccinated. Um, there's just a lot of things that can happen. We could have a, a natural disaster. Yellowstone could go. Um, I really uh, personally believe that there's going to be a lot of earth changes that are going to be taking place, gravitational pulls and things, and we're going to have greater earthquakes, uh, greater weather anomalies, things like that. So there's a, a plethora of things that can possibly happen. And I believe it is is because of all the people that I've already helped, um, uh, the bajillions of people that have already left the United States and expatriated out of the United States, and then I already know that there are already millions of people that have left the country um, but uh, because of taxation, because of other things. But probably this is the other side of the coin that a lot of people don't look at. Do we have to wait till it's so bad that we don't want to live here anymore? Or do we look at it that there is somewhere or places, plural, on this planet that have a lot more freedom, they're tranquil, they're peaceful, they're real, they're just a better place to live? One of the things is that every single person that are listening to right now, every single person, unless they're a Native American or they're descended of a slave, their ancestors, their relatives, left the country of their birth and came to the United States. Now, not all of them came fleeing King George in England or war or um, something absolutely horrible. Some of them just came for a better way of life. Uh, they weren't fleeing uh, inevitable death. Uh, but uh, some people like the potato famine in Ireland. We got a huge amount of Irish immigrants uh, because it was so bad in Ireland. There was starvation. It was happening. So everybody listening to my voice, your ancestors left the country of their birth. And, and sometimes, I mean, I mean, they left their families, relatives. They left, uh, uh, you know, in Nazi Germany. They left the grand piano, the, the trophies, the this, the that. I mean, every possession they had. And whatever they could carry on the back, they got out before the Nazis came forward and uh, took over, you know, almost all of Europe. There's uh, going to be debtors' prisons, concentration camps, re-education centers, all those sorts of things. Um, and uh, Stalin didn't build all those gulags to sit empty. Hitler didn't build all those concentration camps to sit empty. They were full to capacity. You don't spend that amount of time, energy, and effort building these things and let them sit empty. You know that you're going to fill them up, okay? Now, 
uh, I don't want to go to concentration camp, neither do you. You're too intelligent, right? You, that you don't want to end up in prison. There's just a lot of bad stuff that happens there, okay? Um, but I don't think it necessarily has to be um, we're at that stage where they're rounding people up. For every one person that left, or you can say fled Europe uh, on the march of the Nazis all the way across Europe, 21 people stayed behind and died. Now, not everybody died in concentration camps. They could have died of starvation. They could have died by actually thinking they were going to uh, amalgamate into the Nazi system. They joined the SS, the Gestapo, or whatever, thinking that they would rise to power and they would be okay in this system. And yet they died, either because they were sent to the front lines or because of the war itself. So I don't think just going to the concentration camps is the only concern that we have here. Um, they know, they, the people that go uh, nameless, they do know that the world is coming uh, to an apex, that there's going to be an economic uh, collapse. Um, we have rioting the streets. Uh, we have rioting in the streets all over, over the world in, in first world countries, in civilized countries, because of the economic crises, uh, because of a lot of different things. There's a breaking point for humanity, and uh, we're seeing it all over the world as countries are being overthrown. Uh, it's just not uh, the Middle East. It's not North Africa. I mean, I mean, there's some things that are going on all over the world. And we have this mindset in the United States. It can't happen here. Oh, my. Uh, I really struggle with people think that it can't happen here. It can happen. If a pandemic happens and uh, there's, uh, people are forced vaccinated, how many people you know are going to say no to the vaccine? Okay. Uh, I happen to have lived in the hill country of Texas for the last 10 years of my life, and I have friends both uh, in both spectrums, from the left to the right, etc. And there are people that are just itching for this thing to happen, okay? Uh, whether it's, what do you want to call it, civil war or the collapse of civilization in the United States so they can take the country back. Um, there's a, there's a lot of people that see this happening. They, they sense it's going to happen, and, and I believe uh, that it doesn't necessarily have to happen that way. It could happen with a, like you know, I said, Yellowstone, if Yellowstone goes, or some natural disaster or some total economic collapse. Um, research Detroit, Michigan right now. Look at what's happened in Detroit with 30% or more unemployment. Uh, 100 square miles of empty houses. Uh, the mayor of Detroit wants to bulldoze, um, you know, 10,000, 15, 20,000 homes because they're just completely vacated. When we have 20, 30 percent unemployment in this country, we could have uh, a big problem on our hands that the government will want to deal with in, in a way that we, we're going to freak out over, I think. Um, the particular country that uh, I have my other home in has a nominal uh, amount of crime compared to the United States, which Americans should have, is this. In the entire world, 7 billion people on the planet, there's about 9 million people in prison. 25% of those people are in the United States. The United States is 4.3% of the world's population, yet 25% of all the people in prisons are in the United States. Now, 4.3% of the population, but 25% of all the people in the world in prison are in the United States. That has never happened before except in Stalinist Russia, uh, Hitler's Europe, um, Pol Pot, Cambodia, etc. There should be some concern about this. You would think with those statistics, the highest incarceration rate in the world, 50% uh, uh, of, of all the countries in the world have one-tenth the amount of incarceration rates that the United States has. You'd think all of our criminals would be on the, off the streets and they would be in prison. That's not so. The United States ranks as the highest uh, crime country, violent crime country, which is murder, rape, and uh, armed robbery in the world. Now, there's three or four or five countries that have higher murder rates than we do. We're number one in the world in rape, and we're number one, number two in the world in armed robbery. There's crime here. You can go places in the world where you don't have to worry about crime. If you worry about crime, it's like maybe having your stereo stolen out of your vehicle. Would you rather be raped or would you rather have a vehicle stolen out of your uh, uh, um, stereo stolen out of your vehicle? Would you rather be murdered or would you rather have your home burglarized? Uh, when it comes to violent crime, Americans don't realize we're number one in the entire world. And history. Um, <laughs> 
history uh, is something we should learn from or else it's going to repeat itself. And I'm just uh, providing the statistics and the facts. What I've done for 30, 